morning, everyone. My name is Fr Professor Francesco Derchi, and I am uh, connecting from Geneva, Switzerland, beautiful town uh, by the Lake Leman. And I am uh, here as a lecturer for you from the University of Business and International Studies. Today, we're going to talk about a pretty hot topic related to digital native brands. And uh, with the specific case, we're going to get into the case of uh, one of the most famous and popular uh, digital native brands. So let's uh, start straight. Uh, um, my name is Professor Francesco Derchi. As you can hear from my accent, I'm an Italian professor and I divide my time between uh, two cities, both starting with G, Genoa, uh, Italy, and Geneva, which is where we are connecting from now. So uh, getting straight into the topic of the day, um, I think that none of you here around uh, uh, ex experts or uh, passionate about brands and business would, uh, would not agree with me if I say that uh, digital, it's clearly an industry game changer. So why we say that? Actually, if we get into literature, um, we see that uh, mainly there are three major reasons for which we can consider digitally, digital a game changer. Uh, some of them, first is the, is, the, is the paradigm change that digital has created alongside with theories like the abundance theory uh, from Peter Diamandis. The second reason is the reason related to creativity. Actually, digital is a, a huge creativity enabler. And this happens related to people. We have theories about uh, customer empowerment. This happens related to connections, which means the creation of communities and how uh, um, and now th this connection may create value and, and make things happen in, in a good way. And the third main pillar is technology. On the third reason, the, we, we find, that thanks to technology, but also thanks to the idea of, of creation of value, new valuable business models. So thanks to that, digital, it's really a game changer. And now it's clearly that, that, that when we, we get into understanding digital, we, we ask ourselves, what is the role of marketing in this scenario? What is marketing really doing if it's about technology, if it's about new business models? And specifically, let's figure out what marketing is, uh, is doing now when we talk about digital native brands. So uh, um, digital native brands, digital so brands that are native, that are born in the digital age. So they are quite recent brands compared to the long history of brands uh, that we, we can find out in, in today's daily life products. So um, let's start with the definition of marketing. So the grandfather of marketing, Philip Kotler, uh, always say that marketing is the art of creating genuine customer value. So here we have genuinity, but it, clearly we have customer value. This is what we, we, we care for. And in fact, uh, still Philip Kotler in its uh, a masterpiece uh, uh, principles of marketing, which is the glory of all the marketing students and, and most of all my marketing students, uh, uh, identifies five, five main elements for creation of value. The first is creating value indeed to, for customers to capture value from customers in return. Second, in customer engagement. The third element is building and managing strong value creation brands. So we're going to get into the value creation brands. What is the value for the brands? And then we have the return on marketing. And then we have the, the, the scalability of marketing on a sustainable way around the globe. So today we're going to majorly focus on these three pillars, the value creation in general, the customer engagement and the strong brand equity. So when we talk about uh, the case of a native brand, we're going to focus on Airbnb. The first question I would ask you if you were here with me in class is, what is Airbnb? How does it Airbnb work? Well, if we get into, into the website of Airbnb and we ask Airbnb itself in the FAQ, we find that Airbnb is a community based and built on sharing. So they don't talk about the tech. They talk about the community. They talk about people. People that are together and this community is built on sharing. So sharing is, a, is, a, is a clearly an act that people do in order to show that they care because you share things when you care. So uh, getting even more in depth, uh, an Airbnb experience host share their passion and interest with both travelers and locals. So we are seeing that this fact of sharing, this act of sharing is related to low travelers and locals. So this, uh, physical and very intense action <clears throat> is linked with the technology possibility. The technology possibility is enabled by a platform. 
So what is a platform? The platform is uh, it's, uh, it's uh, an entity where producers and consumers gather together in a space that is mostly managed by the owner within a provider. So in this specific case, the owner is Airbnb, the owner of the platform, that is enabling consumers, which means travelers, and producers, which means homeowners, to gather together and to create value, exchanging value among themselves by a provider. Who is the provider in this moment? Well, it could be your mobile phone. It could be your laptop. It could be anything that allows you to get into this platform. So if we enter in detail the numbers of Airbnb, we see that uh, the platform is really getting in to life. It's getting to life through host. We have over 2 million listings. And we have, it's getting to life in guests. We have over 60 million guests that is getting in the platform. And this is only after 10 years of life. And on top of that, now Airbnb is growing. It's growing through adding experiences, adding adventures, adding boutique hotels, and even adding starting to add restaurants. So Airbnb is becoming more than just a platform. It's, 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 it's clearly becoming like an ecosystem. So getting onward with that, uh, now let's focus about the, the concept of creation of value. So what is happening in marketing is that marketing is the process where you are going to create value, you and your team as a marketing person, you're going to create value in order to capture value from customer in return. What does this mean? It means that the customer will be happy to see that you're giving value to him. And for this reason, they will choose you and will choose to pay you. How do you measure value? Well, ma value is clearly the measure of the profit that you're getting from the customer. And in specific case, you can even calculate how valuable you are for him in the way you can exp express a premium price, a higher price than the market uh, uh, benchmark. So this concept of value creation, how does Airbnb is, is designed to do it? So we have found that there are majorly three elements that make Airbnb valuable. The first are the origins. Airbnb has always been uh, focused on creating values since the origin. And this is happening uh, since 2007 when uh, um, Joe wrote, Joe Gebbia wrote to Brian Chesky an email saying, hey, Brian, I thought about it. We should turn our place into designers bed and breakfast because we should try to, to, to rent our space for designers who are getting into town, into San Francisco for some design conference. And we should try to do it now because now there is a big conference. And Joe said, and Brian said, you know what, Joe, this is a great idea. Let's create value for them. We give them a, sp a space to stay. We buy a, an inflated mat and we, give, we double our occupancy possibility. And then we start renting our house. This is how Airbnb was born. And if we go see how through time, what is called the rollout strategy, well, the rollout strategy has always been the same. The, uh, the Airbnb has been uh, positioning itself around the US in the early years by following the cities where there was a Democrat national convention, like in Denver, or uh, south or southwest in Texas. The idea is uh, where there is already a very strong occupancy of hotels because of an event, we try to gather together apartments and unused spaces and rent them out. This is the idea of the platform because this is how they, they calculated value would have been created. The, in, in technical reasons, we call it product market fit. There is a fit between a product, which is this idea of the platform, and a market, which is the demand for space. Clearly, uh, the service has been bare at the beginning. But the good thing is that there was no negative feedback. Why? Well, because the travelers, they really wanted to travel. The goal of their trip was to go to a conference, not to stay in a hotel. So the service was very simple, but still they were able to explain value and to get money out of it. That's what they call the extra benefit. So out of it, we have another element that is very important for the value creation. Airbnb is being able to catch the cultured zeitgeist. What does it mean? Airbnb became the platform that was able to catch the spirit of the time. That's the spirit of the time we identify in what we call the modern backpackers. People around the US, people around Europe, able to... To, to, to crash somewhere in, in, in some apartments in order to enjoy their, holiday, their um, uh, weekends around Europe, for example. Because it's true that the typical tourist nowadays, it's someone that wants to enjoy local life. 
And in order to enjoy local life, you don't want uh, a, a, a fancy hotel. You're looking for much more like a real life in a real neighborhood. For this reason, uh, the marketing manager of Airbnb defined the two customers, one, the host, as much more attitudinal than just demographics. Not, it's not the age. It's an attitude. It's the, how you want to travel that matters. And the guest is a young, single, educated, and affluent. Somebody that is really traveling for this kind of spirit. And you know what? If we get into the data, we see that the main element for which Airbnb has been chosen is because they were disrupting the traditional hotel. This you can see very clear, both in the left graph, and but it's also in the right graph. When you see that the Airbnb became so much more relevant in terms of Google search than Hilton becoming stronger than a major, one of the major Hilton uh, uh, hotel brands in the world. And so the third element that we identify is what the marketing director called the labor of love. People started getting together on the platform, but also in the real life. So you as a, as a, as a homeowner were leaving flowers, were leaving chocolate, were leaving snacks and wine for your guests. And the guests in, uh, before leaving was leaving card notes and leaving flowers to the apartment for you. That is a network effect, but it's basically a labor of love. Because in fact, what we, we talk when we, when we think about the value of Airbnb is that is a, is, is a situation where people and the algorithm business model get together through the platform. Getting into the second element, uh, we're talking about the customer engagement and in today's digital and social media. So how did um, Airbnb manage to get into social media in a digital way? So the first real big point that Airbnb had to deal with, it's called the chicken and egg dilemma. What is it exactly? Well, the chicken and egg dilemma is a typical situation where you as a platform builder, you don't know if you should focus yourself on getting more traffic, more users, or if you get focusing on creating a database, your listing. So it's you want to focus on the chicken or the egg. So, so uh, uh, if you were in class, you would have this a very intense discussion about it. Normally, you have like parties and people gather together to, to collaborate, corroborate their ideas before uh, having a, 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 a class discussion. But now, in case specific, I want to tell you what the, the guys do. So here you have uh, two platforms that back in 2009 were very relevant at the time. At the left side, you see Craigslist. Craigslist is a platform that has been there since day zero of the internet age. It's a very bare platform, very, very simple in terms of, of uh, visual aspects that always been working this way. And you can find a, a Craigslist in major, all major uh, uh, in US city. That platform was the place where people were looking for apartments to stay. You could find uh, apartment friends. You could find a, 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 a place to stay for a night. You can find a, a place to stay when you're moving to Chicago for your university years. You can find a mattress because people are selling out their stuff. You can find everything on Craigslist. So when Airbnb grew up, and this is one of the early uh, interfaces of Airbnb back then, they figured out that in order to populate the database, they needed the, all the data they were on Craigslist because Craigslist was very, very rich of data. You can see from there. It was been there already from, from uh, 10 years. So what did they do? They decided to go the priority to the chicken, uh, to the egg. Well, I don't know what if it's a chicken or the egg, but anyway, they decided to get priority to the host, to the Craigslist. So they said, let's create a database. And so Craigslist has been identified as a potential partner. Now, as the Craigslist uh, had uh, a special code uh, of the website, uh, for which in every string of uh, item in Craigslist, you could deduct from the string itself the email of the uh, manager of the platform. They decided with a, with a hacking strategy to contact everyone on Craigslist and to propose the Craigslist owners to put their uh, data automatically on Airbnb. Thanks to a hacking strategy, a scrapping strategy, it's called scrapping technique, they managed to, put, to pass all the great and very big database from a, um, a Craigslist directly on uh, Airbnb. And this helped them a lot because it grew enormously the, the quantity of database. And you know, in the digital economy, the bigger the database, the higher the traffic. So what happened is that in this win-win strategy, 
Craigslist people had double the space where they could put their database and, and, and their rooms in order to get more people. And uh, at the same time, Airbnb had already some database to trade in order to make more, more traffic. And so they managed to solve their chicken and egg dilemma and they started growing out of it. Now, in the third aspect, in the second aspect, we're talking about customer engagement. What does it mean? It means that in a normal company, you have a top manager and it's very far from the customer. As you can see from the pyramid on the left. But on the right, in the modern customer-oriented companies, you have top management, you have the people that are really running the company within the customer. They work with the customer. They are submerged by the customer's life. And this is exactly what happened to Airbnb. So what happened? The story is very interesting. In summer of 2009, sounds like a poem, but it's a true story. Sounds like 2009, they, the team in Airbnb tried to get into New York. There was a, it was a good time for them. There was a lot of conferences, but they figured out that uh, the, the, the apartments that was booked in, that were listed in New York, they were not performing as well as the one on the other side of uh, the US. And that was a problem for them because they were far. And they're running, the company was run by, 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 by San Francisco. So it was, it was quite, a, quite, a, quite something to move there uh, out of their daily life duties. So they flew and they started investigating personally, both Jebia and Chesky, the owners. They, they started investigating themselves together with, uh, with uh, some uh, uh, house owners, apartment owners, why their, their apartments were not performing. And what did they find out? Well, look at that. The photos were really bad. People were using camera phones and taking crazy list quality pictures. So the pictures and the quality of the elements that were on the platform were so low. They were so low, they, they could not help. So it was clearly uh, impossible for them to, to, to make a good business. Now, look at this. Here you can see the real difference in, in, in the two actions. So what did they do? They hired a 5,000 camera um, quality camera and they started taking professional pictures as many listing as possible. So what happened? They had a two, three times more booking in only a month. So at the single apartment with the professional taken pictures performed three times better than market average. And this is something that they just could be, they have been able to achieve only exclusively because they've been able to live, to get in touch and to, to spend time in the life of their customers. This is how modern companies create value, by being with the customers. The same process they've been using together with a very famous design company to build their own new brand, the, the, the Airbnb new brand. This is the one that you, that you can find now, which is very different from the one I've showed you before. And during that process, they, they had the same approach. They wanted to go there and understand the customer culture. And for this reason, they, they went into 18 host meeting. They, traveled to 13 cities. They spent 90 days working at Airbnb headquarters to, together with these people so, or with, a, with, a, with a sum of 120 interviews conducted. This is to prove you how important the customer engagement must be. The third element we're gonna see today is called building and managing strong value creating brands. So how do you create a brand? How do you create a brand and away from, from customer engagement. I mean, customer engagement is always there, but how do you create brand? What is the, the secret of brand creation? So let's go back to our friend, uh, uh, Philip Kotler. Philip Kotler tells you that strong brands happen in four aspects, brand positioning, brand name selection, brand sponsorship, and brand development. Now, we don't have much elements about the brand sponsorship back then, but what we know is that the brand positioning has always been a focus for the company. The brand name selection has been a focus company. In, the, uh, in fact, the, the logo that you, I have explained you before, and which is now called the Belo, this, this sign has a name. Well, that thing is related to the, to, the, to the process of selection of a strong brand for a strong identity. And the brand development we have seen by the building of different products to be produced on the, on the platform. So let's go see uh, what does it mean building and managing creating brand. So the company identified this uh, payoff, the belong anywhere payoff, as a very strong one. And out of that, they decided to um, close the, to, to put this uh, element uh, of belonging as a core of the strategy of the company. And what did they do to do that? They created platforms, a space where people could share their experience about the Airbnb. 
And guess what? Out of this action, a lot of things happened that was very interesting. One of them I'm going to show you right now uh, with this video. Can you see it? Berlin, 1987. My father was a guard on the west side of the Berlin Wall, while another man guarded the east. Eventually, the wall came down. But even after moving away, my father carried a piece of it with him. While I grew up, it lingered over all of us, a barrier between him and the rest of the world. I decided I would help by taking him back to Berlin to show him the beautiful place it had become. When we arrived, the stranger who answered the door became familiar. The guard who patrolled the opposite side of the wall now welcomed us as a friend. After that, things were better for my father. Airbnb. Belong anywhere. So what can we see here? It's clear that we have uh, a very strategic uh, uh, message behind it. Belong anywhere. It's uh, not only a promise, which would be already strong per se. It's not only promise, it's something more than promise. It's, it is happening. It is a truth, it's a fact. And this fact is happening by real stories that are witnessed by customers. Another thing for which I want to leave you is, uh, is uh, another activity that the company decided to run in order to, to do customer uh, management. So social media are very important to manage company, uh, companies' uh, life together with the customers. So this is a film that Airbnb created with a, a very famous uh, creative director as a, as a director of the film who has been interacting with the customers. The customers that are active on social media, they got contacted by the company and they, were, they got briefed, they got uh, indicated some actions that they were supposed to be to do by crowdsourcing them and putting the elements that they were supposed to do, like little movies, on Twitter and Vine. Per, per contribution, they were receiving $100 to prove that the company was thank, thankful for them. Let me show you this video. I find it extremely interesting. Um, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna browse only two minutes of it just to to show you the the power of the tool. Thank you. 
So I am uh, sorry to, to stop you here. Uh, I just want to, to show you the final framework of the, of the discussion we are having. Um, this is basically what we have seen, right? It's, 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 a, it's a very innovative yet relevant way to um, uh, focus on our value creation, to focus on how to create value with the customers. We are, we are not just uh, sitting there and uh, um, tell them to choose us. We are actually act actively engaging them in a, in a, in a real uh, dialogue, in a real attempt to, 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 to create value together. So how this marketing framework happens for Airbnb? It's clear that Airbnb is dedicated to create value catching for the spirit of the time. And we have seen it. It is considered very relevant because it gives the people exactly what they want in this specific moment time. It might change in a few years. It might change, but nowadays, this is exactly what is happening. The second element that the, for them, for Airbnb, customer engagement has been a top list of their agenda and in their company structure for which they are able to create competitive advantage. We have seen it. They go around to, to discuss with customers the real problem, and they don't let things to be done from remote. They get into the action with, together with their customers. And the third point is that when they do brand building, they always leverage the community because the community is exactly the value creation tool that is the most powerful nowadays in the digital world. To leave you, this is the final framework where value creation from the belong anywhere gets into platforms dynamic, which means community. Out of the community, we see a phase of growth because user engagement creates growth. Within growth, we can get and leverage into creative assets, which is exactly what happened when they asked people to share their stories. Sharing stories makes um, creativity become alive, become powerful. And as a final end of it, people find that Airbnb is relevant and strategic for their business, for their uh, daily usage. And for this reason, they decide to give to choose it among other elements like normal hotels, and this creates clearly straight, strong revenues for the company. So I've been very happy to share time with you and I am here for uh, some uh, questions and, and answers with you guys. And uh, I cheers you from uh, Geneva. Stay safe and good care. Uh, dear Professor Derci, uh, thank you very much for nice presentation. Uh, my name is Ina Aktirska. I am representing the admissions office of uh, University of Business and International Studies, and I hope uh, uh, the participants of the webinar will uh, stay with me for a moment uh, to see uh, what are the possibilities of the newest uh, recruitment campaign uh, that is uh, taking place uh, uh, right now, April, May, we are um, collecting the students' uh, folders for September intake and uh, also for those of you who would like to start online courses, uh, we are flexible in terms of uh, the start dates. Uh, University of Business and International Studies just showed you an example of uh, how we can uh, run uh, the studies and uh, Professor Derki is um, um, one of uh, our professors uh, uh, who is teaching the real students in real timing. Um, you can apply through the website of our university if you will be able to join us this spring or in September, you are more than welcome to. Uh, our university was founded uh, in 2006 by a group of university professors uh, with a vision to create a, a private institution that is dedicated to very high quality education. And uh, we are now well known in uh, all five continents. 
and uh, uh, our goal is to make our graduates shine on an international job market. Uh, so we have a career office uh, who is helping our students to get internships in Geneva, in different international companies, in United Nations, uh, in WTO, and uh, we are also inviting companies to promote uh, their internships for our students. As you are a student in Switzerland, you are getting a residence card and you are allowed to do internship uh, within 50% of the post for a week. Uh, it's about 20 hours of working time. Uh, also, uh, I would like to uh, mention that uh, we received uh, recently uh, the high award from CO magazine uh, for running our um, MBA programs. This is a ranking for MBA. So we were seven among 77 online programs. Uh, what we are proposing, uh, we propose Swiss or Swiss and American dual degree uh, for Bachelor Studies in Business and for Bachelor of Arts in International Relations. Uh, this is a three-year program and uh, annual fee uh, can be paid in installments um, like monthly or by semesters. And study, I repeat, uh, online or on ground. Uh, from that uh, will be difference in terms of pricing. And we have two intakes per year for that, uh, January and September. Online programs can be done uh, in a more flexible schedule. Uh, for the master degrees, uh, we propose Master of Arts in International Relations and uh, also Master of Business Administration in several uh, majors like banking and finance, uh, hospitality management, marketing and management. Uh, this program can be also done on ground and online when you receive assignments and you can speak in real time with our professors. There is also a difference in the price and you can choose uh, whatever is affordable for your budget. Uh, we are supporting students who are applying from different countries. As you can see on these um, statistics uh, base, uh, we have uh, students from over uh, 40 different nationalities. And, uh, pretty much uh, uh, half and half uh, female and male students are represented on campus. Uh, recently, we created an offline uh, application portal online uh, when you can upload all your documents so that our academic team could uh, receive and uh, uh, we get back to you with the answer within 24 hours. For bachelor students, uh, we need uh, to see your high school certificate and grades, um, proficiency of English level. Uh, you are applying with your essay. Um, and for master students, uh, the motivation letter and resume with current experience is important, your bachelor diploma and the grade transcript. If you were studies uh, in English, um, then we don't require language certificate. Uh, for the applicants who are not from EU countries, uh, you are provided a regional acceptance letter. It's our price offer for you. And uh, a minimum one semester payment is needed in advance. Uh, then we uh, send you support documents for visa. It's admission letter, confirmation of enrollment. So we provide you with Geneva address. Uh, so we have special student service uh, who is taking care of your accommodation and also your financial receipts. Uh, uh, then you apply to the embassy in your home country. In case you have double nationality, like Turkish and, for example, Bulgarian or Turkish and another EU nationality, then you don't need to apply for visa and you are receiving automatically the residence card uh, in two weeks when you apply, um, uh, when you come on studies on campus. Uh, in this uh, um, crisis period with this uh, uh, pandemia of um, coronavirus, uh, we uh, have strengthened our platform for e-learning and uh, we are using the system called Zoom so you can see our professors uh, can be uh, given classes from home or from uh, um, here, empty campus for the moment. So we stay in touch with our students. Uh, I created a slide that is describing um, the Swiss accreditations for private universities. After private university, you can go either you know, to public or private university, but you always have to check with the further institution uh, whether um, the diploma will be um, 
eligible uh, for um, the studies. In some cases, uh, uh, of course, um, you need to make sure in advance, uh, uh, like to Canadian or to American institutions, uh, whether you would like to continue for the private uh, education uh, in the private institutions or in the public ones. So it's always a need to check in advance which one will uh, accept. Uh, for the new programs, so that I can uh, leave some time for questions, uh, I wanted to, for you to show that we have uh, a big cooperation uh, with um, universities all over the world, and we have partner institutions that are providing our programs. We are very proud uh, that uh, our syllabus is very um, good quality, so that uh, from many countries people can study uh, using these um, materials. And uh, here I uh, am showing you the visit to the United Nations. As uh, you are a student at UBIS, uh, you are receiving the annual pass and you are using the library and you have access to all the conferences in the United Nations during like a human rights session. It's just required a certain registration. Uh, here you see that uh, we've been... Uh, yeah, posted in uh, many media uh, who were uh, praising the programs. Uh, we do online webinars uh, like the one uh, that is done by our Turkish partners for the moment. And also we are creating our own ones. Uh, so if you will be able to participate, we invite you to. And uh, if you will have any more questions, uh, here is the contact information. Just write us to admissions at uh, geneva.ch and uh, also try to find an article in Turkish language about our school. And I thank you very much for attention. In case you have questions, I'm leaving a few moments for these uh, questions right now so that uh, I can answer. So now you have a moment if you want uh, to use the chat. I don't see any questions.
in that hello uh hi I would... um i lost a little bit of internet connection trouble um but i am back uh are you done with the questions mm. and answers um, if uh, some people still want to uh, ask something, I can still reply. I don't know how much time we left. Uh, and, you have uh, one if, uh, minute. Okay, uh, so I replied to students uh, about prices and our contact information in case somebody wants to have uh, private consultation like individual Skype or WhatsApp uh, call uh, we can schedule and uh, I will uh, have a, a moment uh, to describe for everyone the conditions uh, in case somebody is interested to apply now we can uh, always uh, connect you online studies even in April and May so uh, you don't have to wait until you finish so you can be already inside the program without no no uh, no rush and without uh, like no pressure for September so okay. we are supporting with visa questions and uh, also we are providing uh, internships not only in Switzerland but in United States as we have partners over there as well great thank you a lot for thank this you very much for cooperation thank yes. you very and much we sent uh, a huge hellos from Geneva to IT team Oh, thank you. We send you the same greetings from Turkey. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Be healthy in your sunny bye country. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Take, bye. Take, Take care. Take care. Here in Geneva. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.